Welcome back to CGTN's special programme in conversation with the bridge builders. We have Stephen Perry, who's chair of the 48 Group Club, Zoe Reed, who's chair of the Society for Anglo Chinese Understanding, and we have Toto Guo, who is a vlogger, model, and host. And Toto, I wonder if, if perhaps if I can uh, if I can designate you as a younger person. But um, <laughs> do you think that uh, younger people have perhaps uh, a greater willingness? to uh, throw aside these uh, preconceptions? Well, firstly, I'll say I'm not as young as I look. It's <laughs> um, but I, I think they are, and yet I still think Orientalism or some form of it still exists. And a lot of my friends, for example, as much as they want to know about Chinese culture and they find it cool and they want to embrace it, there's still this sort of fear and there's this sense of like it's a, it's a miserable place where the people are miserable and they're very controlled and they're not happy. And yet the ones that have gone there have realized that actually it's a totally different ball game. And there are elements which are better off here and elements which are better there. But I think for the most part, perceptions are getting better. And I think that social media and television and things like that are helping. And you, of course, someone who, who is doing something about that through your yeah, social media, trying so. to, yeah, to, yeah. to sort of break down those barriers yeah. and uh, inform people. Sure. People who want to show themselves no matter where they're from. And so a lot of the videos and a lot of what we do is about bringing people together and just sort of showing that we're all the same, ultimately. How do we build on what we've started? I wish I had the answer. <laughs> um, but I think that the importance of bridge building is, is paramount. And I think that there are two different types of bridges, right? We've got the sort of more superficial bridges, and then we've got the real strong bridges. And these types of global bridges um, will take longer. And, and I hope, I pray that, that it will you know, go that way. The first thing I say to any friends when I meet them is that when you experience and when you meet young Chinese people, you will be surprised by how proud they are. And this phrase, I love you, China, which is normal speech in China, you know, people say it all the time. Actually, to me, what it means is it's just a celebration and it's, it's not um, a barrier, it's not a wall, it's not us saying we are better or we are like this and we cannot change and we cannot grow and we don't want to explore. Actually, like Stephen said, they do all want to explore, they do want to travel. And this pride for me is a positive thing. And so any positive patriotism and any community feel and any love that's shared, and I think you feel that when you're in China, for me, is, is a great thing. You know, so we have to get over that fear and that notion of being proud of your country means that you're controlled or that you're not proud or you're not interested in other countries, which is totally not true. When we come back, we'll be talking in person to some of the bridge builders to find out just how they've changed people's perspectives. Well, now we're joined by uh, biotech and agritech investor Simon Howarth, uh, vlogger, model and presenter Toto Guo and food vlogger Max Burns. So this might be a slight generalisation, but I would say that the younger generation are perhaps uh, more ready to engage uh, <coughs> with the online world. Uh, so, there's, uh, yes, I, I would include uh, myself in the older part of that generation. Um, so I think it's really cool to be able to use food to share my culture that I've grown up in to people around me who are young people, just in a natural way. And then, yeah, I am sort of building bridges, I guess, mm. like that. So, yeah, I think it's really important. And Toto, not the same experience? Definitely not the same experience. I'm a model, so I don't really eat. Uh, so not so much food, but I think uh, in, in different ways, you know, like I try not to focus on my videos themselves. It's more kind of a reflection of what I'm actually doing. Social media, you know, it's real people in their lives. But at the same time, it's quite superficial. You know, these are short videos. It's not a real window. So what I try to do is when I go do something real, like I organize a party and I'm inviting British mates and Chinese mates, I think that's much more important that you actually go out there and do things, you know, because we don't want this just to be something online. The whole concept for me is people before politics. It's absolutely about connecting at the personal level is what will drive the future. And Toto, you're nodding. Do you think, do you think that's, that's what will make the difference, yeah. a personal connection? Personal connection, yeah. I think, you know, there's going to be huge advancements in business and academia and trade and all these different industries. But I think that until that perception, China is the enemy, fades away, it's going to be very hard. I always just wonder why it is, you know, that people, when they hear about Chinese over in the UK, they always have this fear that they're programmed, that they're brainwashed, that they're not free. And actually, from my experience, from the people I've met, most of the young Chinese people here, they're very happy. They feel very free. And it's, it's just such a shame. It breaks my heart. You know, for example, when somebody says, OK, I'm, I'm from Japan, I'm from Korea and I love my country. When someone says it about China, that I love my country, I love being Chinese, there's always this sort of mm, and a pinch of salt with which Westerners sort of hear this. And they don't understand that actually maybe free to them is not the same as free to us. You know, maybe parents here want their kids to be free to post what they want on social media. 
but maybe parents in China want their kids to be free to you know walk down the street and not get mugged or, or you know get addicted to coke or something like that. There's, there's different ways and different senses of what being free means. And so I think that until that fear of China as this body and this machine fades away, which is going to take a lot of hard work and can't come overnight, until that happens, it's going to be tricky. But hopefully, you know, people can do positive things and just get together, open dialogues, and hopefully we'll see change. But I think it'll be a slow process.